The Earth of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe, Volume 5, and the conclusion, if you can call this a conclusion, of the Book of the New Sun. So, you're going to have to bear with me uh, as I try to summarize and expound upon this book, because this thing was wild, uh, markedly wilder than the preceding books uh, in the Book of the New Sun uh, series. Uh, so there's probably a lot of this, I think, that I, that I just didn't get because uh, Gene Wolfe designed these books to reveal themselves um, not so much through just reading, but uh, through rereading. So I feel as though I may be at something of a handicap uh, trying to review uh, these books, having read them just once. But um, I'm doing it anyway, and I'm going to give you what I got. So uh, the Earth of the New Sun picks up sometime after the uh, conclusion of uh, the Citadel of the Autark, which is the end of the fourth book and the end of the main bulk of the, the book of the New Sun. Uh, Severian is on a spacecraft uh, flying... Uh, to Yesod, which is, uh, I think, the highest level of the Sephiro. So we've got some Kabbalistic influence in this right up front. Uh, but he is on his way to take part in the trial uh, that he is going to have to stand, uh, which was mentioned at the end of the Citadel of the Autark, in order to see whether he is worthy to uh, bring the new sun and rekindle Earth's dying sun and kind of bring a rebirth to the dying planet Earth. Uh, so he's on a spaceship. Uh, some things happen. There's some assassination attempts. Uh, then he gets to Yesud, where he is um, confronted with um, Zadkiel, who is, that's an angelic name, but it's, you know, that the character is basically like an angel, but not technically, I guess. Again, it's kind of, it's kind of religion filtered through science fiction. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, Severian is told, you passed, you were taking the test and you didn't even realize it. So, um, you are the new sun, you are going to bring the new sun, uh, to earth. Uh, so then there's, they, he goes back to Earth uh, on the ship, but the ship, it's traveling so fast that there's lots of um, basically time traveling in this. Uh, in fact, this book is, is very heavily reliant on time travel, um, and it, it, it's subsequently kind of hard to um, keep track of at times, I think, because there's so much of it anyway. So it's very goes back to Earth, um, but... Uh, we learn uh, gradually that it's not the Earth of the time in which he left. And here is where uh, the book really starts to kind of clarify some things about the previous books that many people uh, might not have really picked up on. Uh, so at the end of the Citadel of the Autar, we were told, it kind of just comes out of nowhere, uh, Severian says that uh, the universe is cyclical, um, that it's like a big bang, everything spreads out, but then everything comes back together because space is curved, so it comes back, and actually, I don't think that's scientifically accurate. I don't think space is curved. Space is flat, I think. there You can go forever in whatever direction you want, so I, I don't think, I don't, you know, this is science fiction, but, um, and this maybe isn't the hardest of science fiction, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I will say I don't really think that's scientifically accurate because I don't think uh, it's basically like the big crunch model, which is now kind of outmoded, really. Um, so maybe the physics of this may not hold up so much. But anyway, in the world of these books, uh, a, un a universe starts, everything spreads out, but then everything eventually comes back around and it starts again. Um, and Severian also told us that he was not the first Severian, that there had been uh, prior Severians before him, or at least one prior Severian before him. Um, and now we see that kind of resolved because uh, Severian realizes, and we gradually come to realize as well, that he is in the past now, or really that he went, I think I think it's, and again, bear with me, I'm pro I may get some of this wrong because this this book was 
it was moving. There was some, there was so much happening in this book. I kind of struggled to keep up with it, but I think it's that he's now like in a new universe and like, it's, it's kind of like the Nietzschean eternal return thing where it's like just the same thing over and over. It's basically a time loop like that. I think, Again, I, I may be getting it wrong, but I think it's basically like a time loop. And now he is now in the earlier stages of a new go around than he was on the old one when he left. And now we learned that Severian is, uh, in fact, the conciliator because the conciliator is like the Christ figure who is alluded to a lot um, in the previous books as having been like a miracle worker in the past. And now Severian finds that he really was the conciliator. He is and was the conciliator. And now we see that um, they're kind of really, there's, there is more than one Severian, but it's kind of like, maybe it's just the same Severian because again, it's kind of like a loop. It's kind of, I think it's kind of just going over and over again. So he is um, like, it's, it's all connected, I think. Uh, so anyway, he realizes that he is the conciliator and also, he, we eventually learned that he somehow was another um, historical figure in the previous books named Apu Panchal, who was uh, kind of contacted via the seance time travel thing that they did in, at the finale of the second book. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot going on in this. Anyway, Severian works some miracles. Um, and then the earth gets like flooded, like a Noah's Ark type deluge. Um, but that's, it had to happen, we're told, because that's what the new, the coming of the new sun would do. And then Severian goes, there's some more time traveling stuff. Um, and yeah, at the very end, we realize that he was the, the, the like the guy from way in the past who was like, I guess it's like some kind of Incan or Mayan civilization, because again, I think these books take place in South America, uh, and we realize that Severian was kind of the, the ruler of them, uh, and then the book kind of, I, I didn't really know what to make too much of the ending, it, I didn't know, it just kind of stopped a little bit, uh, but yeah, that that's about as much as I can give when it comes to the Earth of the New Sun, because like I said, this book was wild, and it was wilder than um, the, the the previous books. And you know, that might be a mark against it, at least in my uh, view, because the other books, that they were wild. Like, the Book of the New Sun is a, is a wild series of books, but they weren't quite as uh, frantic uh, and so much as this one is. Like you're immersed in a, in, in kind of a, a foreign world and you don't know what so many of the things mean, but like the actual events of the story unfold in kind of a measured pace where it, it doesn't feel like it's happening too fast and you kind of, you know, it feels like just a, a an ordered progression of events. But this one was different. This one was like one thing after another. Um, and it, 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 it happens fast too. Like it's just boom, boom, boom over and over again. Some more time travel, some more like revelations about certain events and their significance from the previous books. And like, it's, it's cooking. This book really, really did, uh, move quite differently than the other books did. And so I think, you know, that kind of, this one was not quite I don't think up to par with the others, uh, but it's still a great book. Like, uh, to talk about the technical aspects of it, I guess, uh, the writing is still just as good as it was. You know, Gene Wolfe was just a, a hell of a pro stylist. He really was. The, the writing is still great. Uh, Severian is still an interesting character, and he's still not a very likable character as well. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, it carries over. Th those elements are still just as solid as they were in the previous books. But once again, the plot of this one uh, really did move quite differently, I felt, than the other books. And um, it, it, it didn't hook me quite like the other books did. Uh, in fact, if I'm being perfectly honest, the first, like, 100 or 150 or so pages of this book were 
quite the most gripping. In fact, it was kind of, it, I, I really wasn't hooked so much in the beginning stages of this book like I was with the others, uh, but it did get better in terms of maintaining your interest um, as the time travel stuff kicked in and as we see that, you know, things really are cyclical, that Severian um, is, always has been, and always will be these various figures which we were introduced to in the previous book. So it all, it really is kind of all just a loop. Um, and it really does maintain your interest. But again, it just throws so much stuff at you. And again, I think there's just so much of these books that I just didn't quite get this one uh, in particular. In the ending of this, uh, I didn't, it, I didn't really find the I didn't I didn't really get the ending so much. It, it seemed like it kind of just stopped. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that was by design. I'm sure that was, you know, intentional. But I didn't really get the ending so much, why it ended exactly where it did. Um, and also, the first person memoir presentation of these books, I'm not sure if it really made as much sense as it did in the previous books. Uh, and I know that's probably disputable. but um, like Severian is writing in the previous books for someone in like the next universe, uh, which ends up being Gene Wolfe, you know, metafictionally, uh, because in the beginning of this book, he like throws the manuscript of the, the previous books into the void where it will get like, it'll wind up somehow in the next universe and then be found by Gene Wolfe. Um, uh, but then this one, I was like, who are you writing for? Like, I, I don't know. I just felt like maybe it didn't quite make as much sense as it did in the previous book. Uh, but overall, this book is still really good. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a good conclusion, again, if you can call it that, uh, because this book does something that it, I think is very hard to pull off, and that is it managed to clarify things but do so in a way that didn't just kill the mystique because the book of the new sun has a mystique like few other books do. It's cryptic as all hell. So much stuff that uh, you really have to pay attention to or read between the lines to get. And this book uh, did a very, it did a very deft thing of being able to both uh, shed some light on things, but yet still maintain the mystique, still maintain the aura of um, kind of mi uh, mystery that hangs over these books. Uh, so it, it, it really it is uh, commendable in that respect because it did something that few sequels in this position would probably have been able to pull off. So um, I think Gene Wolfe, uh, even though this book didn't quite hook me like the others, I think Gene Wolfe did stick the landing pretty well. But beyond that, the theological aspects of this book, um, which is really, if I'm being honest, it's like the heart of the Book of the New Sun. Um, even besides all the time travel and time loops and cyclical universes and everything, uh, the real heart of these books is their theological musings. Um, and I really liked that aspect as I did in the previous books, but I liked it here especially because um, we get such kind of a macrocosmic view of the universe with this book. Um, and it's very, very fascinating. And it's very kind of like awe-inspiring really. Uh, but yet behind it all, there's still that unknowable divinity, uh, which um, of the increate, as it's called in these books, which uh, it kind of it kind of hovers over uh, the story, uh, because that's again what these books are really about. It's about mortals trying to divine the, the nature of the divine, um, and maybe not succeeding. Um, and so there's still that again, that unknowable divinity, that kind of unknowable God aspect that kind of hangs over these books. Um, and it's really palpable here, and I really like that. And it, it really, you know, this book, it kind of pulled off the impossible of being a, a sequel coda thing to a series uh, that is renowned for its mystique, for its cryptic qualities, and it did so in a way 
like I said, it was able to uh, both shed some light on things, but not kill the vibe. Uh, and that is a real feat. So to rate The Earth of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe, I'm going to give this one an A-. minus. I think I gave all the previous books an even A. This one's slightly less because I felt like it gets kind of breathless uh, there in the latter half. The first half is kind of slow, but then in the later half, um, the latter half, I mean, it it's cooking. Like, it it's really kind of breathless, and it's just throwing one thing at you after another. And it's kind of breakneck. It really is. And, again, these books are meant to be kind of confounding. They're meant to just reveal themselves on rereads. Uh, but I, I think this one, you know, it, 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 it wasn't quite up to par, I don't think, with the previous ones, but it's still you know, a kick-ass book, and it's it's a fine and fitting way to conclude uh, the Book of the New Sun, I think, because it it, fill, it gives you some more pieces to fill in the gaps, but yet there's still enough that's kind of unclear and gray that you can kind of, you know, speculate on. So, uh, really, it, it did something uh, quite remarkable, I think. So, yeah, the book of the, I mean, the Earth of the New Sun, Volume Five of the Book of the New Sun. I'll give an A minus. So, the Earth of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe, or the Book of the New Sun um, in full. Have you read it? Let me know down in the comments if you have what you thought about it, whether you have agreed or disagreed with anything that I said about it here today. And if you haven't, so with this, uh, with being the final book in the in the Book of the New Sun series, I can finally say. Yes, I will recommend it. The Book of the New Sun is truly one hell of a wild ride. It is a very singular experience, uh, but it's it, it it's it may be at the very top of the science fiction uh, pile, or if not, it's just right near it because these books are uh, exceedingly literary. They're exceedingly well told. And the story, the construction of, his, of it is exceedingly well executed. And it's something that um, I don't think a lot of authors would have been able to pull off with as much aplomb as Gene Wolfe did. So uh, my overall sentiments regarding the book of the New Sun, that's a hard recommend from me. Even though I do recognize that some people may not really jive with these books like I did. Um, but I just thought it was a fantastic experience. Uh, it really does kick ass. It's very mysterious and kind of hard to figure out at times, but it, it's kind of unlike most anything else you're likely to encounter. So yeah, I could recommend it. And as always, if you have enjoyed anything you've seen or heard here today, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And until next time, peace.